And my name is Joanna Reiter. Um, I am the director of Mums on Fire. And I wrote this script for the film, like I started three years ago. And uh, the film is about uh, unfaithful, heavily pregnant mummies. Uh, I wanted to uh, challenge motherhood uh, because I'm really provoked how strict it is and how many rules there is in our society. And I also wanted to liberate the heavily pregnant body and reclaim the sexuality of the pregnant body and make it to a subject and not an object for the male gaze. <laughs> and uh, that's it. You, you said that the expectations about motherhood provoked this movie. Mm. So how would you describe these expectations? Mm. I mean, already when, uh, you, when you are pregnant, you are like really guarded in the public space and the society. Uh, you're becoming like more like a creature, not like a person anymore. Uh, and it's so many rules about what you can't do and what you can do in the public space. Um, so it's like, yeah. So I was uh, from the beginning really provoked by that, but also the expectations of motherhood. Uh, and like I said before, like the playground is much bigger for fathers and daddies. Mm -hmm. uh, but as a mother, you have to be kind of perfect in a way, uh, not to break rules. What would you say are the rules that can't be broken? And would you say that you break these rules in your movie? Yeah, therefore I wanted to do this movie to break like many rules. Like for example, the mummies, they are heavily pregnant, but at the same time, they are unfaithful. Uh, so it's it's also against like uh, monog monogamous uh, like relationships. And uh, yeah, they also they don't want to be mummies. And at the end, they are just escaping their motherhood and breastfeeding. They are taking the magic pill. Mm -hmm. uh, so the fathers have to. Yeah, they are stuck with the kids and not them. Mm. Uh, and also, I wanted to like release the pregnant body and to to uh, to reclaim like the sexuality of the pregnant body, like uh, not seen from the male gaze, but from from themselves, mm. like they are. Yeah, masturbating and uh, talking about sex and being unfaithful and but it's only like four day, days left until they're going to give birth. Mm. So. Would you say that the public view on pregnant women is that they have something saint-like about them, something divine? Is that what you try to break with? Because I have the feeling that's sort of what you're describing, that, that the body becomes something holy, that cannot be touched, that doesn't have yeah, sexuality. Yeah, yeah, it's like holy, but also either it's holy or either some men think pregnant female bodies are really sexy. So it's either this or that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like you, you, you're kind of... Uh, uh, kind of... You're not kind of yourself anymore, you're just this object and I want to make them to subjects mm -hmm. in my film. Yeah. And how exactly would you say that they become subjects in your movies? By reclaiming their sexuality? Yes, by... yes, they're reclaiming their sexuality and they are not adjusting to like to being a like, good mother, uh, so they're breaking all the rules of how you should be as a mother or becoming a mother and they already have like a kid each uh, and uh, they are basically talking about that oh god I don't want to be pregnant again and it's so fucking boring we can't get, dr we can't get drunk now and uh, yeah all, all the rules mm. so to speak and <laughs> Breaking with monogamous relationships, would you also say that that is about breaking with the rules of society? 
Yeah, yeah, it is. Because, yeah. I mean, yeah, like, if you, if you are with, uh, if you have a relationship and you are with other people, it's like you are unfaithful. But maybe in the future you can't be unfaithful anymore because the uh, monogamous relationships doesn't exist anymore. Who knows? Hmm. So. I have to say, when I watched the movie, now it sort of makes sense, but when I watched the movie I had the feeling that I didn't really like the characters, that they sort of broke with my expectations a lot, mm. but I guess this is part of breaking with this holiness, with this saint-like mm. expectations. Exactly. Um, so would you say that your movie also has a political dimension? Yeah, it's very political, <laughs> totally. It's like very political and feministic, mm -hmm. uh, because they don't give a shit about all their all the rules of the society that society puts on mummies. So, yeah. Mm. And, and I think it's really important for me to present this kind of image of mothers, like unperfect motherhood and unperfect mummies. Mm. Because usually in media and film and art, uh, like often you, you have a presentation of like, yeah, perfect motherhood and being like holy mummy and all that things. Mm. <laughs> Where did you get the, the inspiration from? From media? From personal experience? Yeah, well? personal experience, I guess. So, yeah. I was like comparing myself to uh, the father of my child, like what he could do and, uh, for example, without without uh, even have to, like even, no, how do you say it? Yeah, whatever, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and personal, uh, yeah, personal uh, experiences, and uh, yeah. So often when I do art or film, I'm provoked by something. Mm. So in this case, um, I was provoked mm -hmm. by this subject, like, and I wanted to release the pregnant body and also break the expectation of being like a perfect mother and motherhood. And that is also something that you do in other art projects, isn't it? Like when Yeah, I've been working with it for quite a while mm. and I'm tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> mm. There's one detail I have to ask about, mm. the cat. Yes. Where did you get the inspiration for this cat from? So I often, I have often been using like animals in my films and art because I, I think it's interesting um, to see things from animal perspective or a child perspective. Uh, like also in this film we see a lot of things from the child's perspective. And uh, both animals and children, they don't have this uh, already uh, establish nor norms, so you see it from a different point of view. Uh, and the cat is also... Uh, for me, I also use the cat to, to make like the character of the mummies stronger, because like she's all the way like pushing away the cat, and she's pushing away the kids, kind of. Uh, uh, but also, I think it's interesting when, when an animal, uh, like, so the cat is a female cat, and all the time she's like watching her, like the mummy, and also she's trying to uh, seduce her. So I think it's interesting, like, because usually it's the other way around, like the humans are using animals or we are eating animals, but in this case, like the animal try to seduce and use the human being. Hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> so would you say that not only the content but also the aesthetics of the movie is queer? Uh, By getting a new perspective from the animal, from hmm. the kid, that is not structured by society's expectations? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and it also... Like the society is like a patriarchal society, so I want to like, how do you call it, sudabort. Um, to get rid of? Yeah, to get rid of that. And 
and use, try to use other perspective, like the female perspective or the child perspective or the animal perspective. Mm. Uh, and why did you decide that the two women should make out? That there should also be, well, a homo or bisexual aspect in there? Mm. Oh god, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote the script like three years ago, so it's... Um, how was it again? No, so yeah. So one one of the mummies, she's like actually seducing the other one uh, because in the beginning, uh, this mummy uh, called Roxy, she's more like laid back, but then. Uh, No, I don't... Wait, I have to think. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe once again to get rid of uh, like uh, the males and to create like their own uh, space somehow. Well, we Excludera, how do you call it? Say? Exclude. exclude. Yeah. Yeah. To exclude the man also yeah. from this relationship. Between yeah, the men. exactly. Um, we already talked a bit about the aesthetics of the movie and mm -hmm. I wondered how exactly did you do the movie because it looks like a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I found a great uh, puppet maker and uh, so uh, he, he did some, uh, he did like a character and when I saw it I thought it was like great and I really liked it. Uh, it felt like I did it, but of course I, I wouldn't be able to do this great work. So yeah, I really like the aesthetic. Mm. But then was it was it stop motion or how exactly? Yeah, it's stop motion. So it took like four months to animate it. Wow. And he also animated it. Yeah. And he built like the whole house and the living room. And yeah, exactly. So I wanted it to be like a middle class white area. And uh, uh, I also told him how I wanted to have the all the codes like in the props and the set design. Uh, so one apartment, apartment is like IKEA apartment kind of. And the other one is like bohemic chick. Uh, so yeah, for me it was also important with all the codes and how they dress. And uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, there are so, lots of details. Yeah, in yeah, and the toys. Mm. But also he did. Uh, he he I I wanted to give him like a lot of freedom. So also he did a lot himself mm. so, so he could choose like patterns and colors and yeah. mm -hmm. um, did your movie already have a premiere in, in Sweden yes yes how did the audience react to it oh they <laughs> they thought it was really fu funny they were laughing a lot and I, I was a bit surprised because I didn't I didn't I never I could never imagine that it would be fun mm -hmm. as funny so yeah, they really liked it, and I, I think people felt like uh, uh, yeah, they were like thankful for for sh that I'm for uh, yeah that I <laughs> how do you say it uh, that I did this film because it's really like uh, breaking all the expectations and people uh, would say like oh that's so great to see like mm. those kind of characters but it's interesting that you said that you didn't expect the audience to find it funny what, no. what did you expect i mean uh, i i wanted i mean for me it's like really political yeah so uh, i i was expecting that people would say oh god this is like really great film and it's really important uh, uh, but I didn't expect them to laugh so much, I guess. <laughs> did, you, uh, did you screen the movie in the festival here yet? No, okay. it's on Tuesday. 
and do you expect or do you think that the audience here will also find it funny or do you think that here it might be a different situation and people find it very political? Uh, I think, I, uh, I guess, uh, I guess the Germans are not so aware of feminism as we are in Sweden. So maybe they will get more provoked, but it depends on the audience. If it's like a really queer audience, they're going to like appreciate it. And, uh, but maybe some people will get provoked. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know, but I was just thinking about my question because yeah. I said, do you think they're going to find it funny or political? But then I thought it could also be both at the yeah, same both. time. Yeah, exactly, it? exactly. Mm -hmm. so because also I use it as a stra strategy to like uh, have this childish, uh, 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 how do you call it, tilltal, so barnsligt tilltal, um, men hårt in the off, hall. Well, the off voice where he tells the story more or less. Uh, now I like to have like this childish aesthetic on it, ah, or approach, yeah. uh, but the content is really like political and uh, important, so I use it as a strategy and maybe uh, humor as well sometimes, but I never plan to make it funny or, because yeah, if it's funny, it's funny, if not, it's not, <laughs> it doesn't matter. All right, well, I wish you mm. a great premiere here yeah. and I hope you will have a great Q&A afterwards. Mm. And thank you very much for the interview. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs>